All right, we're being asked to solve this differential equation, and in this video, we're going to do it using the method of undetermined coefficients. This looks like a really easy problem, uh, but I think it will be instructive. So we'll start by finding the complementary solution. So comp solution. It's also called the homogeneous solution or complementary function. So to do that, you take your differential equation and you set it equal to zero. Right, you set it equal to zero, and you solve this differential equation. So here, we can write down the characteristic equation. Uh, there's a second derivative here, so you put a 2. This is the first derivative, so you put a 1, so just m. It's also called the auxiliary, I can't say it, auxiliary polynomial uh, equation, auxiliary equation. I prefer characteristic, it's easier to say. Uh, to solve this equation, we factor out the m. And so here we get m equals 0 m equals 1. So we have distinct, distinct, real roots. So y sub c will be c sub 1 e to the 0 x plus c sub 2 e to the 1 x. Now if this doesn't make sense, uh, look under playlist in, in, in differential equations. I have a whole bunch of examples of solving um, homogeneous uh, differential equations like this one because the, they're easy. Uh, they're really easy. So that's that's our homogeneous solution or our complementary solution or our complementary function. Uh, lots of names for the same thing. Now we're going to find yp. That's the next step. So find yp. So I like to do this in two steps. So first let's make an initial guess for our yp. Now when I make my initial guess, what I do is I only look here, only look at the right-hand side of the differential equation. I ignore the homogeneous. This is just the way I do it. I, I don't know if other people uh, do it this way. Okay, so here, based off of 3, our initial guess is A. Okay, that's our initial guess. Now we'll find the modified version. So what is the modified version? Well, to find the modified version, you look at YP, and you look way down here on the left at yc, and you ask yourself, is there any repetition between the terms of yp and the terms of yc? Well, there is right here, this guy, c sub 1. That's a constant. a is a constant, so we have to multiply y sub p by x. Right? We want to make these linearly independent. All right, now we'll find a. So to find a, we're going to plug in yp into our DE, into our original DE, right? Uh, this, this one up here. So before we do that, it looks like we have to find derivatives because uh, it has derivatives in it, right? We have a second derivative and a first derivative. So the first derivative of YP is just A, and the second derivative of YP is just zero. So plugging these into the differential equation, we get zero, that's our second derivative right here, minus y prime, so that's just going to be a, and that's equal to 3. Well, that means that a is negative 3. So our y sub p, well, y sub p, it's right here. So it's going to be negative 3x. So negative 3x. You know, it, it, it could help to, like, circle this while you're, while you're doing the problems. It's really easy to plug it into this one. Um, just don't lose track of it, especially when the problems get long. This problem turned out to be super easy, but at the same time somewhat instructive because we did have to modify our y sub p. Anyways, the final answer is just yc plus yp. y sub c is c1 plus c2 e to the x. Right, that's over here, y sub c, this guy, um, plus y sub p. And we said y sub p was negative 3x, so negative 3x. So that is the solution to our differential equation. So uh, an easy example, but again, uh, not the easiest. It was instructive because we did have to modify our y sub p. I hope this helps.